here on the development page, there are a number of options. And to be quite honest, the average administrator of Moodle will, will very rarely need to visit this page. These really are things that are designed for developers, people who are altering code and testing code within Moodle. However, there are a number of items in here which really can be useful even for you know, an average administrator. So let's look at some of those. First of all, the debugging section. Now, this enables you as an administrator to see uh, a deeper level of debugging messages and error messages and feedback from the system than you would usually get. So usually we do not show any warnings or errors within the Moodle interface. This option, enables us to really provide a lot more information to administrators and very often in the Moodle forums if you read those and you see a post where someone's saying I've got a, a problem with this sort of behavior very often you'll find one of the first pieces of advice is have you turned debugging on so that you can see the output and see what the the errors are and um, quite often you know you'd want to see all reasonable PHP debug messages or if you've got a developer trying to help you solve a problem you may even go to this sort of developer level to see a lot more information. If you switch this switch on then the, the those error messages will, will go to the HTML page so you'll actually see those straight away. Um, for you know, for in-depth developers and for people who really know what they're doing, they probably prefer all this to go to the server logs, as it says here, because this allows a, a kind of deeper level. But it can be a useful switch. If you have problems with email specifically, uh, perhaps not sending or, or not receiving or, or some other odd behavior, then the debugging of mail is certainly one of the switches that you'd want to switch on there. Performance info. Uh, you can switch this on, but be aware that if you if you switch this on, then in the bottom of your page, in your footer, you're going to see lots of extra information. Now, that might be useful for a quick bit of troubleshooting if you're trying to investigate something, but clearly you wouldn't want this switched on all the time because this might confuse or worry the average user seeing that. So the default is is definitely to not do that but it's there if you if you need it um, the same with the page information which is also shown down there and we also have validator links this is a way of kind of checking that all the the links and validation of those is working um, you do need to do a little bit of work to set that up you need to have guest access on as well you need to uh, set up as it says a user with with W3C Validator. Um, if you're in a situation where you're being asked to, to do these things, then that's cool. But do notice, again, this is one of those things that you don't want on a production site. You may be using this on a test site or a, a prototyping site or a staging server to identify uh, any potential issues. But again, it's not something that you would want on a production site. Uh, another very useful area or, or option for, for administrators is the caches or caches depending on how you want to pronounce that. With Moodle lots of things are cached like JavaScript and language strings if you're running a, a multilingual site, themes of course. If you were developing a new theme and you wanted that to, to refresh each time you, you refresh the page then you would probably want to purge all the caches for example to make sure you're seeing the newer versions rather than the, the later versions. Um, with that specific example actually, theme design, there is a uh, theme design mode which is going to do that for you but um, this option can be useful if you're you know if you're if you're if you've upgraded a module or a site or or you're, you think you're seeing old information rather than rather than what you're expecting the newer information then purging all the 
all the caches will it's just a simple one-off process and um, it just gets rid of all that kind of temporary data that's being held and served rather and, and make sure that everything we see is is up to date and new there is a consideration here which of course the cache is being used to speed things up for people by serving files very quickly if you purge your caches like this then you will find that your site is slower for people initially until those caches rebuild so uh, just do be aware of that some of the other things that are potentially useful here um, it is possible to make test courses I would say and, and you know there is a there is a note here about only using this on on development servers not on live servers I would say most people can create their own little test site in terms of in terms of the things you want to test this level of testing is actually uh, much more rigorous and much more in-depth than is intended for intended for really in-depth testing of servers f by developers so it's probably not something that uh, as an administrator you'd, you'd want to do just use a template course for testing um, but it's in there and it's worth making that distinction you know between the two and then we've got some experimental settings anything that's being introduced in Moodle that isn't quite 100% uh, perhaps or, or marginal or a very small use case will be will first of all possibly appear in experimental settings and then later on in a, in a later version of Moodle be, be moved to a you know a, a proper menu item so at the moment uh, in this particular version we can see there are two experimental settings one is the use of the safe browser integration which is a, a, a system that can tie down the browser for uh, for online exams for example and we also have a experimental setting for the drag and drop of, of text and links you will know that you're able to drag files from your desktop or your file manager onto the course main page and that they'll be added by Moodle this is an option that allows you to do the same with text and links but it's experimental because for example dragging into Firefox is unreliable and 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 may corrupt the text which is you know the last thing you really want to be dealing with on your Moodle site so it's experimental and maybe that feature will get better in the future um, it's there you know it could be used but definitely the fact that it's under experimental tells you that unless you really need that it probably at this stage should not be enabled the final thing worth mentioning on the experimental and, and under development is the database migration and this is really for this would be a kind of one-off operation that you may use it enables you to move from one database type to another so you may be wanting to move to uh, MySQL from uh, a different format database so here you would be supplying the database location and username and passwords you would then be making sure that you are using the correct prefixes and so on obviously Moodle will generally use MDL underline as a prefix for table names but not necessarily um, so this is really just a way to move databases between one format and another if you're if you're doing that type of thing and you're not familiar with this obviously obviously you know you'd bring in a specialist um, it, it's gonna be a one-time migration probably worth getting some support in an area like this and then of course you'd want to enable that maintenance mode before you actually transfer the data <laughs>